um, thank you for this uh, great introduction uh, to all, all of you, all, all the team, and, and um, to everybody who is, uh, who is here today. Um, it's a pleasure to, to be able to speak to you. And I hope in the future we can meet in person, uh, Omar. <laughs> Um, so I have prepared a, a, a presentation with uh, a few uh, slides and, 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 and sounds. Um, so I'll, I'll start by sharing my screen. Um, up, I hope. Give me one second. Up. Yep, here it is. Um, okay. Um, yeah. So I've I, I don't have much to say about about me right now because I've already been introduced. But um, so I'll just go right in with the with the presentation uh, that I've titled um, "Facing the Colonial Toxicity of the World: The Case of French Caribbean," and more specifically, the case of um, of Chlordecon, um, which you see on the left, uh, a little picture of that molecule. It's an organochlorine uh, molecule, and that was used in banana plantation. I will talk about this a bit, a bit later. Um, but to start with, I do have to say a few a few words. I've already said thank you, but uh, of course, um, we'll be talking about an ongoing struggle against um, uh, environmental pollution. Um, and I just like to express thoughts for those who have already perished because of that pollution. And, and especially um, my thoughts to the activists who are daily engaging with, the, with this uh, pollution, some of whom may be attending um, this talk today. They, some of them talk to me, I don't know if they are here. You know. And again, uh, finally a thought for the people, uh, inhabitants of St. Vincent, which if you have heard uh, are experiencing uh, volcanic eruptions at the moment. And a few, finally, a few um, remarks regarding my positionality, uh, where I fit in with this research. And I'll just, I'll just say a few elements on that. First of all, as Omar said, I'm Martinican. I was born and raised there. And what is interesting when you work on, on top Toxics is, you know, in social sciences, there has been, not today, but, but there has been this whole idea that you must be very far away from your object to, to, to have an you know, objective view of it. What's interesting is that working on, on pesticide and toxicants is realizing your own um, contamination. That means the contamination of the researcher, the body of the researcher. So suddenly you cannot dissociate your physical body from, from, from the research you are doing. Um, my family has been involved in that struggle to some extent. Um, and yeah, I'll just, I'll just <laughs> say this. Um, and as a result, I'm a researcher who also um, is engaged or involved in, um, I, I do many, I've done many talks with activists, um, and I talked about this at, um, you know, in some news channels and so forth, and, and I see my work as, an, as doing some interventions, and, and I was pleased that, that Omar realized it as, you know, trying to contribute to, um, to basically making the world more ecological. And the final point regarding my position is that I am a Martinican black male scholar working on environmental racism, environmental issues in France. Why is it important to say that? Is that because there is a public atmosphere, especially right now, but this has been going on for a long time in France, where if you work on decolonial, postcolonial racism, there is always a suspicion that, you know, you may be working against the Republic. So this is just out there. And um, again, a lot of the, theory and perspective I bring to this case is already laid, laid in my in, in the book that I've published. So, you know, that's also a case for, for, for the reading. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm going to be talking about two islands in the Caribbean, uh, Martinique and Guadeloupe. Um, yeah, just 
so you see where they are. Um, just a bit of history, you have to know that these two islands are former French colonies and that they became part of France in 1946. That's what we call the departmentalization. That means that uh, when you step onto France or onto Martinique, you, uh, when you step on Martinique or Guadeloupe, you step onto France. There is no difference. I have a French passport. Just, I mean, in theory, there's no difference, of course. And um, I, I put in 2017 the law for real equality because the, the departmentalization, that means the, the transition from colonies to departments, was done on the condition of um, social equality or equality of social rights. An equality which, which was not achieved to the point that we have put forth another law to, to, uh, to, um, to be really equal. And we and Martin and Guadeloupe are part of the overseas territories of France, the same way uh, the United States has you know, uh, Puerto Rico and France has all these territories that you see here in, in three oceans. And uh, yeah, yeah, just, just so that you know. Now I have a plan today in four parts, um, a bit of the theoretical frame that I'm gonna use. Um, um, and I, as well as explaining the, the, the major aspect of this case, the chlordecone contamination of Martin group. I'll talk about the two different ways to look at it. One would be toxic colonialities and the th third part, colonialities of toxic. I will explain to you what I mean by these two, two directions to look at the same problem really. And then in the fourth part, I will talk about some of the mobilizations and, and you know, demonstrations as well as some uh, artistic production that basically um, show the resistance of people there, uh, you know, in Martin and Guadeloupe. Um, so, yeah, so here we go the, for the first part. Um, regarding the theoretical frame that I use, um, and again, that is already laid out in, in the book that I've published, there are three elements that I want you to pay attention to. The first one, which, which was really the starting point, is the realization of what I've called a double colonial and environmental fracture. What do I mean by that? Is that there has been historically, and less and less so now today, a major divide between the way we understand uh, ecological crisis, environmental issues on the one hand, and the way we understand colonialism, slavery, and anti-colonialism. So this divide you see in universities, in um, NGOs, and uh, in, in concepts and, and authors. And a lot of my work is trying to bridge this divide, trying to see the way basically environmental issues affect uh, the colonialities of, of power of living to piggyback on um, um, different theorists like Walter Mielo, uh, and Balki Krano and so on and so forth. But on the other hand, how the colonialities of the world also has impacts on the environment. So this is the, the, the two things I'm trying to do. The second uh, aspect I want you to, to look at is what I've called the colonial inhabitation of the earth or the Pantasino scene. Now, many of you have probably heard that this era geological era that we are in has been termed the Anthropocene, uh, following the work of Paul Crotzen and, and others as being the era in which a certain man, Anthropos, uh, will be the major dominating geological force in Europe. Well, thinking from the Caribbean world, um, there is a different way to name this era. And usually we, we name in the Plantationocene, which means the, the era of plantations. Plantations being agricultural or industrial mines from the world. And what I mean by colonial inhabitation is not just the fact that you have plantations, but it's really a way of conceiving of oneself on earth, in the world. That means where the sole objective will be the exploitation of humans and non-humans for capitalistic profits. So it's really a ontological conception of what it means to be on earth. And that has really uh, channeled, affected the way these islands, Martin and Guadeloupe, has been inhabited so far. And finally, 
which um, echoes the main thing of this talk today, uh, the double play that I have with the expressions toxic colonialities and colonialities are toxic. So what I mean by toxic colonialities is the fact that because of this colonial inhabitation, because of his, um, the legacy of the exploitation of both humans and the environment, that this way already implies uh, some toxicities by themselves uh, in terms of social injustices, um, in terms of ignorance, the production of ignorance of ourselves, look into that. So there is something, there is something toxic in colonialism, let's say, per se, in itself. On the other hand, I want to highlight how the toxic, the pesticides, as an agent, an actor, has also a coloniality to it, the way basically it will uh, percolate into the different sphere of life, the way it will stain the soil and the body and so on and so forth. And, and these two sometimes build very, very um, damaging alliances. Um, yes, yeah, so that, that, is, that is basically it for the third frame. Now, as regards to the case, um, so here you have just a picture of um, the banana plantation in Martinique that I took uh, a few years ago. But to give you some few important points to know. So chlordecone is an organochlorine. That is a molecule that is of the same family as DDT, for example, which maybe some of you have heard. It was first, oh, sorry, I left the, the, the slide in French, but I can talk of it. It was first um, produced in the States in 1951. That was the great era of uh, organochlorine. It was used in, the, in Martin Guadalupe for about 20 years, from 72 to 93. It was stopped, though, in the US in 1976, uh, declared carcinogenic in 1979, but we still carry on and used it in, um, in Martinique all the way to 1993 and even longer. But what it, this is a powder, a white powder that was used at the basis of the, at, of the banana plant. It's not a tree, it's a plant. So, against one insect called uh, a banana weevil, really. And that use has created a, a, a contamination that has three major aspects. First of all, it's, it is long lasting. That means the, the molecule in the soil may stay for, from 60 years to up to seven centuries, depending on the type of soil, so really long lasting. It is generalized, that means that it's not just in the soil, you find it in the water, in the food, in humans, in animals, in, wa in coastal waters. And of course it is harmful. It is both an endocrine disruptor, something that disturbs the hormonal systems, the growth, the development of the organisms, and it is carcinogenic. So these are the main points that you need to have in mind when we talk about Claudicon in, in, in Martin. In the now let's go into the, the second part of the, the talk, toxic, toxic communities in the, in the ruins of slavery. Um, yeah. Now, this is here to give you just some um, elements of what I mean by toxic col colonialities. In what way colonialism and the legacy of colonialism is toxic today per itself, in itself. Um, so, one thing you need to know as a former, as plantation islands, let's say, but during the slavery, we, we used to mainly produce sugarcane. In the 1960s, I mean, at the beginning of the 20th century, we started developing um, a banana uh, plantations, banana agriculture. And that really became the major product in 19, around 1960. And to this day, this is the major production. So even though the type of crops has changed from sugarcane to bananas, the, the, the agricultural model, the way the land is inhabited has not really changed. So we have um, a production that, have, that has around 20, 000, 200,000 tons per year. 
This is equivalent to 2% of the world global exports. And, but most of this production is, is exported to mainland France, the, the continental France, around 95%. And this is, this is said to create around um, 10,000 jobs, more or less. Um, and again, this is a production that can only be um, exported because of some technical um, development, like you have containers that are uh, refrigerated and, and so on and so, on, so forth. One of, the, one of the ways you can see the legacy of slavery in this production is by looking at who owns the production. One thing you need to know in Martin and Loop is that um, we are post-colonial and post-slavery societies. That means that there is a particular ethnic, social, racial, ethnic composition of the society. And to highlight this composition, I'm just going to show you this here. This was a, an advertisement of the banana production in Martinique um, with different messages. But in these messages, they tried to show uh, the different phenotype, body type, let's say, of the Martinique and Guadeloupean people. Uh, and of course, this was also a, a way to uh, greenwash uh, the, the production, saying this is a you know, production that is good for the environment and so on and so forth. You will notice, of course, that the question of knowledge is associated to only one body type. <laughs> and one of the important social racial class in Martinique and Guadeloupe is the class of the white Creole that we call in Martinique uh, and in Guadeloupe either Beke or Blanc Creole, white Creole or Beke. Why is this class or group very important? It's because it's a group that has a particular claim. Um, they claim to be the first, um, the, the, the descendant of the first colonist and slavers of the islands. And to have had an endogamous practice, that means they, they marry only within themselves to preserve the purity of the race. And to this day, this group, which is plural and diverse, some are rich, some are middle class, some are poor, but this group generally, and especially part of this group still has a dominating economic position in Martinique and Guadeloupe. And especially with respect to the um, banana production, that means that most of the production is owned by people who belong to this class. Now, when you look at the, um, uh, how do you say, the struggles and the, the conflict around this pollution, it's interesting to see that you will have a production defended by people who claim to be former colonists, descendants from former colonists and slavers, against environmentalists who claim to be descendants of former enslaved, and so on and so forth. So you have a bit of, a bit of a reenaction of a colonial and master slave uh, thing here. Um, oops, that was supposed to be somewhere else. Yeah. Um, sorry, I think I. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. This is a slide I want to show you first. Now, what does it mean to inhabit a land or to live on a land that is inhabited solely or mainly for colonial exploitation. It means that all or most of the infrastructures would be geared toward that particular exploitation. So um, from the, the location of the port, from the roads, um, everything is geared to provide and, 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 and yeah, export and develop this production. And this results in two things that I will highlight here. And I, and I just make a small here, a small comparison between what happens in the state, because as I say, this molecule was produced in the state and stopped in 1976. And you know more than me that we cannot say that the state is the most protective country regarding to pesticides, even though they stopped this pesticide in 1976 because it was too dangerous for the workers of the factory. That was in Virginia, and, and you know it as Kepon, Kepon, K-E-P-O-N. Um, 
keep on being the form, the commercial name, but the molecular still name, Claudecum. Even though there was this event that happened in the States, it took between 20 and 30 years in France and basically Martin Guadalupe for the government and the states to take the first protective measures re with respect to that contamination. Uh, measures regarding the, the, the filters in the water so that people will not you know, be contaminated by the water. I think you have something like that with Flint uh, in the States. Uh, measures regarding the soils so that before you plant some root vegetables, you can test the soils. Measures regarding the, the fishing ban. So now in Martinique, you cannot, and Guadeloupe as well, you cannot fish in uh, rivers and inland rivers or some parts of the coastal areas. And it's only in 2008, so, you know, almost like 32 years after they used the Chlorodicum that they started researching ways to depollute the land. So it took a long time. And again, the first parliamentary, the real strong parliamentary inquiry only happened two years ago. And in 50 years, you had no, um, no convictions. I mean, no, the, the, the justice had given no verdict on what happens. Here, I've just give you, one, uh, oops, sorry, a picture of the, um, the Procureur de Paris, so it was like the head of the Paris uh, Tribunal, who gave an interview to say that the complaints that have been filed 14 years ago may be too late, so that, the, so that there may be no issue, no verdict in that, in that justice system. But yes, this is, these are the facts. But what, what this colonial infrastructure means is that for, for many years, it was impossible for the people to have information on the states of the contamination of their lands, on the state of the use. So that's what, that's what in a, a field of study, uh, social science, uh, science and technology studies, we call the production of ignorance. The, the fact that you give the illusion that everything is going well. Uh, when NGOs were asking about the state of the pollution of the waters, uh, the health agencies would reply to them, no, it's good. But actually they, they were not testing the molecules that they were using in the plantations. So this is a structural production of ignorance. And as a, as a consequence, it prevents the inhabitants from taking responsibility for, for what's taking within and in the land. And the, one of the other consequences is what I've called the um, astronaut humanity complex or astronaut humanity lies. It's, the, 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 it's an image that maybe some of us have encountered before. It's the idea that you live, you live on an island with an astronaut suit. So if you, if you go to Martinique and Guadeloupe, if you take your car and you drive you know, around the island, you would see that you have a plantation, a sugarcane plantation on the left, a banana plantation on the right, and you yourself are in the, uh, is in the car, but somehow you are given the illusion that you yourself are, or is, or you are outside the plantation. So plantation on the right, plantation on the left, that means you are in the plantation. And, but with this astronaut humanity complex, then you have the belief that um, what happens in the plantation doesn't concern you. And of course, such pollution, when you realize that today, today more than 90%, 90%, 90 of Martinican and Guadalupean are contaminated by, by, by this molecule, it, it just shattered the astronaut humanity uh, complex. I will talk about the off-groundedness of the enslaved later in a, in a, in a, in a moment, yeah. And of course, what this colonial um, um, toxicities does is that it creates a number of uh, uh, different types of violence on the body itself. It's, it, it, it increases prostate cancer, the, the, the chances of having prostate cancer. It uh, reduces the length of uh, pregnancy. It increases the chance of uh, basically, yeah, having the child before the time. 
the, the word in English. And, uh, and it delays the cognitive, motor, and visual development of infants. So basically, this pesticide that was used on plantation is really an infringement, an attack on the bodies of Martinican and Guadeloupean. It's not a violence as if, you know, as if you shoot a gun, but it's a slow and incremental violence that some people call slow violence, and you know, we can talk about that later, or body burden. So now I'm going to look at the other side. That means in what way the molecule itself contributes to another form of coloniality. And to make a quick little um, musical break, um, I'll, I'll have you listen to one uh, Guadeloupean uh, musician who wrote a song about, about this contamination. Please listen. Oh, ay, ay, ay. Whoa, a Ay, 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 pays en moins empoisonné. Oui, à l'assassin bourreau, avec l'ordre de conseil, monsieur lave les fines battes avec nous. Est-ce que ça vaut faire chanson? À te donner, c'est des prochains ensembles. En pesticides, les autorités. So you, you've been listening to Wozen Monza, um, W-O-Z-A-N-M-O-N-Z-A. Um, and, and you've been listening to uh, traditional music from Guadeloupe called, called Woka. And basically in the song, he's just calling, calling out the, the fact that they've been poisoned. Um, so what do I mean by colonialities of toxic or the master's chemistry you, you'll hear? Now, here again, this is just a re oops, sorry, just a reminder of um, the way the molecule itself um, goes beyond the plantation and um, will affect every little sphere of life. Um, from you have a little picture, say that it goes with the watershed, um, the land. The water, the food, that that you find chlordecone in the umbilical cords of uh, you know woman and a child, and this is not just for, for chlordecone. For many other toxicants and, and toxic molecules, this is this is this is the same. Um, but it is important to also look at what the molecule itself does as as if it was a political actor, the, the, the way it, it affects the, the world. Now, it, it affects the world in two different, in Martin King Guadeloupe, in two different ways. Um, if I can move forward, yeah. Um, the first way it does this is that by furthering what I call the of groundedness of groundedness of colonial slavery. So you have to remember that these are former um, slavery and colonial societies that most of the population of Martinique and Guadeloupe come from, not all, but most, come from formerly enslaved people brought from Africa to the, um, to the Americas and the Caribbean in order to work on the plantations. Now, even though the, um, the enslaved were on the plantations, they were denied any real responsibility in the way the land was organized. So even though they knew more than most the seasons, the plants, the, 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 the land, the soils, its geology, they were not allowed to be captains of these islands in a sense. And so as a result, um, all the work that they put in for the masters um, 
was not something they could control and there was and and there there was structurally a disconnection from the land of course this is no plantation if you look at the creole gardens and the spaces of marronage the fugitive slavery they were able to to make different connections but most of the lands you know these are islands covered by country most of the lands were lands where the former enslaved could not really relate to in terms of their condition and that that goes back, I, I probably will not touch too much on, onto that, but what I call the shipwrecked conditions. Um, on the left, on the right here, you have a, um, a st statues of, in the south of Martinique in a town called Diamant, um, that were built both in homage to an actual shipwreck of a slave ship that happened there, but also in homage to the triangular safe trade and it posits formerly of the enslaved as shipwrecked as if you have ships wrecked on an island but if you think that the island where you live is only you at the island or the land the ground the piece of soil where you, you have shipwrecked it means that you are waiting to move somewhere else that that there is still time you haven't still as glissant Edouard Glissant would say taken the land in your belly and here again, I'm talking structurally, I'm not talking about what people have been able to do in their own gardens, but on the margins, of course. But structurally, this is what, what happens. And my argument here is that the chlorodecon contamination furthers that distance from the land. And this is how it does it. First, it furthers it from the land itself. Now, because this molecule is very attached to the organic soil, it doesn't grow, it doesn't go up into the fruit trees or into, you know, it just stays very strong in the soil. That means if you want to plant yams, uh, sweet potatoes, uh, different types of root vegetables that constitute the, 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 the daily meals that, you know, made how tr our traditions, our culture, then you have a problem. However, if you want to keep, if you want to, to produce bananas on contaminated lands, then you can't because the molecule will not go all the way up onto the banana trees. That means that the bananas themselves are not contaminated. This is why you can still eat and consume bananas in Europe and in France that come from contaminated lands in Martinique. As a result, if you are a young uh, peasant farmer, uh, you know, and you wanna, you, you've just bought a land and you wanna make money from this land, then you would use the same crop that has polluted the land. You would use banana, banana plants. So this is another, so that means that the land, and again, this is a, a system where you export what you produce and you don't consume what you produce. So we don't have food sovereignty here. That means you exacerbate the dependency you have on imports. Um, and this is, again, this, the same uh, distance goes with the water. Now, here you have maps of the places where you cannot uh, fish in Martin and Guadeloupe since 2008-2009. The, the, the coastal waters because they are polluted. And many fishermen have been uh, either had had to stop their activities or go into early retirement. So that means that there are spaces in Martin and Guadeloupe where the canoes, the fishing canoes do not leave the, 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 the ground anymore. And, is, and it is not just a loss of you know, income or economic income, it's also an infringement on the practice, a practice with which the water, the sea is not just water and sea, but it's part of the culture, it's, it's part of um, the landscape. And, and, and so that, that, and again, you cannot fish, therefore all the fish product or a lot of fish product will be imported there are different ways, you know, you can still fish further at sea and so it's not, everything is not, you know, but it just further the off crowdedness that I talked about. And finally, 
it affects the off-crowdedness with respect to the bodies. As I told you, we found we found Clodicon in the in the umbilical cords, but also in the in the milk of mothers. And I'm going to read one testimony that I uh, took a long time ago from uh, one inhabitant of Martinique, and here's what she says. But this issue of Clodicon scares me. It scares me, as not long ago we started putting coal to filter out the poison in the water we drink. I lived in Bass Point, Bass Point being one of the cities where Clodicon was even you know, overused. It means when I gave my breast to my children, even though I had left Bass Point, and I lived in another town, La Mota, I was poisoning my children. I was poisoning my children. And he, and he has cells that are in, already rotten in his body and that is worrying, it's worrying to me. Now, this is a very important point. Because this molecule finds its way in the milk of mothers towards a child, there is a, a distrust in the very ability of the land, the waters, and our own body to cater for life or to, to be welcoming and protecting of life. Now, of course, if you talk to a doctor, he would say, well, your milk, even though it may have a little bit of chlordecone, is still better for your child than the powder milk. But you see, that calculus that you have to do, that, that um, reflection you have to do on, okay, well, it's not, it's not good, but you know, that's what creates the... And so some people are thinking, okay, I want to have, have children with, you know, we are a couple, we're not children. Can we do it? Is it safe to do it here? And, and again, this, there are other consequences, but yeah, it's just, it just furthers the... And this is one of the challenges I want to take on also is, the fact that when you denounce these these affairs, these these matters, and I, you, it's important to do so in a way that does not jettison or does not get rid of the whole land, of the whole waters, or the whole body. So, so it's a very tricky and fine line to walk on. How can you, at the same time, denounce this injustice, but yet to not lose trust in the land, and the water, and your own body? This is. Um, this is a, a, a tricky, tricky part. But the result of that is that because even though the banana plantation has been the one creating this contamination, especially for you know, with its capitalist pursuits, then because in contaminated land you can mainly make money out of bananas, then the masters, the former masters, come out reinforced by this contamination. And here I just give a quote from Simon Schwarzbart, who is a, a famous uh, Guadeloupian writer. In a book she, she called uh, uh, Tijan Horizon, and she said, with respect to another disaster that had nothing to do, but she understood that relation that the disasters does not revolutionize the world. Actually, the, um, the richer becomes richer, the poor becomes richer, and uh, the poor becomes poor. And that's what you say that the planters seems to find new assurance in the midst of disasters. And here I've given you some ad advertisements of, um, of, of these banana groups, um, some in 2005, some in 2010. And the, 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 the main slogan motto in 2005 was the banana, I haven't put it here, the banana, nothing can beat it. Nothing can defeat it. And then they have since instituted a plan called the durable banana. Now, it's a very interesting choice of word. Uh, of course, it, it's a part of a greenwashing with, you know, uh, sustainable development. And, you know, but in French, we say development durable. And with the sustainable banana and durable banana. So, but it, it just shows you that and of course, none of the companies, owners, and who have used that knowingly that pesticides and contaminated more than 90% of the population for many, for many years and maybe for many centuries, none of them have had to um, suffer any consequences while they were able for more than 50 years to accumulate profits, so on and so forth. So 
Um, now, let's go to the fourth part of the presentation, which is basically looking at some of the mobilization that ha happened. And again, just a quick, uh, a quick break with a uh, musical break with um, a song that I'm, I'm, I'll try to share my, my browser with you this time. I hope this works. Up. Um, no, not this one. Up. Yeah, and this is a song by a Martinican singer called Kolo Bartz, which talks about, which, who talks about a major agricultural worker um, strike in 74, 1974. Can you hear it? Yeah. C'était en février 1974. C'était en février 1974. À Ouvrier agricole, t'es qu'à manifester, ou bêtier t'es augmenté. Les jours des mananas, ou bêtier t'es augmenté. Les jours des mananas. So, why do I show this, um, this, this, this song? It's because 1974 was the first time in Martinique when um, there was a protest against the use of this molecule. What was interesting is that amongst the different ports that the workers wanted to, to, to work on, the you know, regular salaries, uh, better pay, uh, better working conditions, they also asked for the removal of this, for, for stopping using this, the, the, the use of this pesticide. However, in the accord to end the strike, their demands specifically related to that uh, molecule was not met. And this is a quick timeline of the um, of the mobilization. After 1974, you had a period of from 1974 to 2000 where not much happened with respect to that molecule. Of course, the the environmental organization, the social organization, were very active on different matters. But with respect to that particular molecule, nothing much happened. And that is a result of the production of ignorance. Ignorance. How can you uh, protest against something that you, you're not allowed to know or you're not given, given the ability to know? From 2000 to 2008, a number of um, uh, complaints have been filed in the juridical system. Um, there was this event from 2011, 2014, where there were there was um, conflict and fights regarding the aerial spraying. Um, I can talk about this in the questions, but, and even though it was not against Chlordecon, because it was against something related to pesticide, Chlordecon became an aspect to it also. But then um, everything changed, or at least the, 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 the mobilization had really taken a major step forward in the last three years. So maybe really recently. And here you have um, a few people that are important, that have been important in the environmental movement. You may recognize Raphael Confian, a famous writer from Martinique, a Boutrin, a politician and writer. Two people, Pascal Tourbillon and Henri, Henri Virégis, that are, that are part of the major, the, the historical environmental organization of Martinique. And, and one lawyer from Guadeloupe, uh, Harry Durimel, who is now a mayor and, 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 and yeah, a part of the field. But what happened since 2018 is very interesting. I'll just talk to you about this quickly. Um, you had different petitions. Um, here, one called Je suis Claude Econé, which mimics the typography of a petition re regarding a terrorist attack in Paris. Je suis Charlie, I am, I am Charlie, with respect to the Charlie Hebdo a terrorist attack. Um, many more demonstrations, uh, which 
which had never happened before that in, in Martinique and, and, and Guadeloupe with respect to that pesticide. Uh, only asking the, you know, de denouncing the, the poisoning. You have an important collective that was created called Zero Poison, Zero Poison and Zero Chlordecone that do really great work in basically um, informing people of the situation and, and really trying to de intoxic to remove the toxics from, the, from their body. I'll talk about this later. Then last year, um, you have a, um, a new generation of rather young activists who take a more radical approach by sometimes stopping and um, occupying some roundabouts, uh, making some actions on big mall, big commercial centers, because some of these centers are also owned by people who have their hands tied with banana productions. So that was a way to, to attack them. But what happened is that they have been heavily sanctioned. They have received police brutalities. Um, so here you have a picture of someone called Kesar Kesa Nussier and her and his mother, uh, Madly Etile, who last year um, have been heavily uh, attacked by the police uh, with racist remarks, calling him uh, dirty, dirty and the N words and attacking also a, a symbolic uh, aspect of our culture, the, um, the drum. I didn't show the picture of the attack because I don't think we need to show another picture or movie of a black person being beaten. We've seen enough of that. And, but it, it highlights the double standards between, you know, companies that have polluted for 50 years, but nothing happens to them. And then protesters that do something and then in a few months they are in prison. And again, you have now, since last year, a new collective of agricultural uh, workers who to this point had been uh, left, left a bit in the background of the mobilization. And that was, that are pictures uh, of um, February 2000, uh, this year, February 2021, the 27th, where there was the greatest demonstration against Clodecon. And why is this? Because the head of the tribunal in, in Paris, or the court in Paris, said that there may be a that, that, that the court, the, the, the file, um, the complaints may go nowhere, that you know, you, you, we may dismiss the case. And that led to a massive, about 10,000 demonstrations in, in, in Fort de France Martinique here. And that was echoed also in Paris. And this is the Place de la République, mainland Paris. I wanted to give also uh, some insight into the artistic production that has accompanied the political and juridical mobilization. Here you have a production by Jean-François Bouclier, Martin Can artist, uh, called Banana, Banana Man, who has also worked in South America as well in other places. And on the bottom left here, you have uh, um, a production in which um, Zaka Toto, um, also another activist in Martinique, uh, did, uh, that basically, if you look at it carefully, links the banana to uh, the, the, a woman who is draped in the flag of France, but yet has had a, a breast amputated because of breast cancer and ma making the link. Um, yeah, I, because I've gone over time, I won't go too much into that. I'm, I'm sorry, I know you are an, an art school. <laughs> but um, but the, the, the final slides is what I call reclaiming bodies and rerouting Mother Earth is the work specifically of these uh, Claude Detox uh, collective, which they, they fought for the right to be able to test the Claude in your own blood before you couldn't do it. Or, and then when you could do it, it was very expensive, about 150 euros. So if you are five in family, it's way too much for, you know, for one. But they have a protocol in place where they test their bodies they, and they, they are in relation with um, organic farming uh, people so that because not all the lands are contaminated so that they can um, get rid of a toxic in, in their body. But getting rid of a toxic in the body means also adopting um, agroecological and organic farming practices. And so the way, so what interesting that they're trying to really reclaim control of their body by removing a toxic, but also in doing so, 
getting rid of that off groundness and reconnecting with with mother earth I, I just, i'll just uh, leave it leave it as that um and this is the final slides really um basically to, to have a few concluding remarks um the that this issue brings back the injustices of slavery in the sense that the abolition of slavery like in other places but martin Guadalupe, was not met with justice now let me say this clearly again the abolition of slavery is not justice in fact the abolition of slavery came on the condition that the former masters were um, were, were paid off but the former enslaved got nothing. They were free, but then forced to work back in the plantation. No land, it was very difficult. And to this day, there is a growing movement in the States, in the Caribbean, that is asking reparation for slavery in Europe. And because the owners of banana plantation also echoes back that group of former masters, then there is the idea that there is never any justice for this particular group of people. And again, this struggle against uh, the toxic and the toxic colonial world that I've described here in Martin Guadeloupe is not or does not happen only in Martin Guadeloupe. It happens in many different places in the world. Claudicon itself was used, <clears throat> was used in many countries in the world, even in Europe, um, in South America. Uh, so one of my friends just told me that maybe they, maybe in Morocco, but that. I'm, you know, he's waiting, so I know Omar say hi, but, but also in Asia. And that really the fight that we are engaging here in Martin Guadeloupe is, is a fight for, you know, that many people in the world are also facing. And now this is the final, final slides. Three little uh, remarks. We have to go beyond, that. that is a particular frame that I couldn't, that I didn't talk about, but we have to go beyond, beyond one single molecules is if there are many chemical that was used and we have to be able to think about them all together. Um, look at both ways, what the colonial system does in allowing the use of toxics and what the use of toxics does in preserving and maintaining the colonial system. And the necessity to reconnect with Mother Earth in any solutions that we, but that we choose. That the solution is not just to get rid of the land even though it's polluted. I have given, given you here a few uh, further readings. Of course, there's my book in French that will be published in, in English uh, before. Uh, two chapters that I've written in, uh, regarding that particular um, uh, case. Uh, I can yeah, leave it here for a little while. And then one chapter on the climate justice in, in the Outre-mer. But yeah, and with a few colleagues, we have built this alternative research center called Observatoire Termon, one of observatory. If you want to follow us in what we do, and you can just uh, uh, click on this, this link, Termon. And uh, that's it. <laughs> that's it.